everybody, Ben Giddy Baker here, and we're out here in the Giddy Shop today for a special edition of Cigar Box Nation TV. Instead of sitting on a stage and talking at you or playing, I'm going to build a diddly bow, a fully playable diddly bow. Now, if you don't know what a diddly bow is, you're about to. I don't want to do too much talking before we get started here. Um, but basically, it's a one string instrument, the simplest sort of stringed instrument that you can build. This is about as basic as it gets. So what I've got here are a few materials. I got a piece of wood. This happens to be the remainder of a ladder rail. This was a ladder when the rungs went in here. The same ladder, coincidentally, that I used for the neck of the upright base that we've used in previous videos. So it might be a little hard to believe that I've got a stick and a couple of things on the bench here that in the course of a fairly short broadcast, I'm going to play build a playable instrument and make music with it. But that is exactly what I intend to do. So I'm going to talk through it as I'm going. I hope it goes well and nothing goes wrong. So uh, this is live, live on Cigar Box Nation TV here on Facebook. And uh, I hope it works. So I've got a electric guitar string, 0.052, a nickel wound. And what I'm going to do is just kind of lay that on this piece of wood I'm going to use to get an idea of where to put my nails. These nails are the anchors that will hold the string in place. And for that, I have a couple of old square nails. I can't remember exactly where they came from, but they might have been from uh, some wood we salvaged here at the mill where uh, CB Giddy calls home. <clears throat> so basically, I'm going to just arbitrarily sort of pick a couple of points on my board here so that I've got a few inches of, of string that'll be extra and you'll see why we need that here in a minute. So I don't know what the measurement is. It honestly doesn't really matter all that much with the diddly bow because tuning is a very relative thing with the diddly bow. So I mark my points. I'm just going to drill a couple of pilot holes. Now I'm going in at an angle here because I'm going to be putting uh, nails in here and I want them to have a back angle to them. So I start off straight up and down and then kind of bring the drill bit in at an angle. Then I'm gonna take my old square nails here and my trusty hammer with the nice loose head on it. I'm just gonna pound these two old square nails in here at a bit of an angle. Now, those of you who have been fans of cigar box guitars and whatnot for a while, have probably seen this before. There's a guy out of Pennsylvania, I believe, or New Jersey, uh, One String Willie, who's been doing this on stage for years, building a diddly bow and then playing the heck out of it as part of his live act. So I certainly didn't invent this, and I've seen Willie's act a couple of times, and uh, I'm borrowing liberally from it. So a shout out to uh, One String Willie. So what I'm going to do, I've got my nails pounded in here pretty good now. I'm going to take my guitar string, feed it back through the ball on the end to make a loop. And that's going to go around one end of the, uh, what are you guys giggling about over there? <laughs> got some of the giddy crew over out of camera shot hanging out. So I make kind of a, a noose out of it and put that around one end, pull it tight. And then I bring it down and pulling it pretty, pretty snug, about as tight as I can get it by hand. I'm gonna, what was that? I'm gonna wrap it around the nail a few times. This is, uh, this is live from the CB Giddy shop here, and we've got various shenanigans going on around us. What are you building? Speaking then? of shenanigans, a surprise appearance oh by Farley. God. I was telling them on the live broadcast here, I'm making a diddly bow, a wow. one string instrument. Like one of, it's like the archetype, the prototype of stringed instruments. It, it's hard to get any simpler than this. The only thing more simple than this is when they used to use mouth bows. Have you ever seen one of those? Yeah. Take a bow and arrow and kind of lodge it in your mouth and twang it and wah, 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 nice. with your mouth. And then even simpler than that, like in, back in ancient times, you take a, a vine and stretch it over a hollow log over a couple of, a couple of sticks and, and strum it. And that was probably some of the first stringed instrument music ever made was, you know, a tight string stretched between two points and then strum. So that's kind of what we're recreating here today. Very cool. So I wrapped my electric guitar string around that nail a few times. 
then I'm going to bring it out and kind of wrap it around here. Thanks for stopping by, Farley. <laughs> <laughs> and get it good and taut on there. So now I've got my guitar string between those two points. So now we need something to raise it up off of the surface of the wood and uh, make it tight, because it's the tightness, the tautness of this string that makes the music. So what better, I'm using an old reclaimed piece of wood, old nails here. I've got some old glass bottles that I actually found. These are uh, like a medicine bottle and what looks like an old uh, fingernail polish bottle or something. It's still got a brush in there and some old, some kind of crusty old color. Um, I found these in my neighborhood at home. A new house was going up and it turns out that area used to be an old dump an old garbage dump and when they dug out the foundation there was this big pile of dirt there and bottles just all over in the dirt and like man I gotta get up there and dig through that before they spread it out well I didn't do it that night the next day I go by it's been spread out but you could see on this what will be a yard just glass everywhere and a lot of them weren't broken so um, here's a this one got kind of a square profile to it so I'm just gonna put it under the string and push it over here fairly close to the nail, like so. I don't know how good that's coming through. And there aren't any hard and fast rules about how far or how tight, um, but you want a good bit of tension on there so that you get a good note. So I've got that one, and then I push this other little one up against the other end, and those act as the nut and the bridge for this stringed instrument. Um, they are what sets the scale length. Oh, got the air compressor kicking off in there. Um, and when you start playing it, if I don't anchor these down, they'll start to move. So I got a couple of other nails here that I'm just gonna kinda, these are rusty old nails that came out of some came out of some uh, flooring I reclaimed or I salvaged out of my old high school back in Ohio, the old gym floor that had been kind of hidden away in a crawl space for years. I got them out and saved all the nails. All right, so now what we have, I've got my bridge and my nut kind of anchored in place. We have an acoustic diddly bow, fully playable, can have a lot of fun with it. Um, like if you take a screwdriver or a couple of screwdrivers, or another glass bottle, and hopefully the mic will pick this up. You can hear the string kind of loosening up as I go a little bit there. The pitch was dropping. I can try to adjust that a little bit, try to keep it nice and tight. So that's acoustic, thank you. <laughs> um, which is cool, it's great, you can see I did this in about five minutes, but that's not quite good enough for what we're doing here today. To really take this to the next level, we have to electrify it, right? So what I've got is one of our gold foil pickups. These are the Tesco style uh, gold foil pickups. These are actually made to be kind of uh, fit into the sound hole of an acoustic guitar. They come with little uh, swivelly clamp things on the back. Well, I took those off. I ground off the rivets, took those off so it'll sit flatter and I drilled a couple of holes through these mounting tabs here just to make it easier to mount because I've got to get this on here underneath this string so that this pickup is not too close because you don't want the string going up and down to hit it but you want it fairly close so I've got a spacer here that I made up and I got about a quarter of an inch of space there try to push down on that a little bit more and the closer I get to this end, the higher the string is, but I don't want to get too close because that's where I'm going to be sliding. So I'm just going to kind of pick a spot here, somewhere towards the middle of the thing. Actually, I might go right in the middle here and try to do my best. Um, so now I've got to, I want to screw this down so it's not in the way. So what I'm going to do, 
take my nails back out here for my nut and bridge, take them out. That loosens up the string so I can kind of get that out of the way for a second. And I'm just going to take a couple of these old brass screws. And these screws, I'm trying to use everything reclaimed here today, everything that came from something else. These screws are from an old box of brass screws that my grandfather gave me. He spent a lot of years restoring and working on old wooden boats back in Ohio. And uh, anytime he took a brass screw out, he would save it and throw it in this old toolbox he had. Well, I now have that toolbox. It's over on the rack over there. So anytime I need a cool old reclaimed brass screw that once was part of a wooden boat somewhere on the Great Lakes, that's where I go to get it. And actually this workbench here uh, was my grandfather's workbench. I hauled it up here to New Hampshire from Ohio when we were cleaning out his garage a couple of years ago. I grew up at this workbench working on different projects and scrapping out things because he always was you know, scrapping out old motors and things to get the aluminum and the copper out. So having this workbench here at CB Giddy is pretty important and meaningful to me. So I should have pre-drilled these holes because I'm stripping out these old brass screws here. And hopefully I can get this up high enough here above this pickup. We'll see. So I just, I screwed it down to help keep it in place underneath the string there. And then I'm going to kind of anchor my, my nut, my bridge back in place here on either end. Are we getting any comments or questions, Nick? Not yet. It might, sometimes they don't show up right away on the There's some on comments the that uh, it's a pretty sweet build. Well, we, we, we ain't nowhere near uh, <laughs> done yet, so nobody Shout panic. out to Shane. He's posting out some great uh, diddly ball fan players out there. Lonnie Pitchford was one of the one of the best known ones, I think. Uh, uh, what's, Kaiser. Oh, yeah, Glenn Kaiser. Jeez, can't forget him. Uh, Luther Dickinson, I think. Cooper Moore. North Mississippi All-Stars. All right, so now I've got my, uh, I've got my pickup mounted on here. Got a good bit of tension there between the two points. Everything held in place. So these uh, gold foil pickups, they come with a, a plug on one end and of course the pickup on the other. We do have one question. Uh, uh, Bob Taylor is asking, would this work well with a piezo? Um, that's a good question, Bob. Uh, Bob Taylor has asked, will this work with a piezo pickup? And if you mounted a piezo somewhere like underneath the nut or underneath the bridge, I can guarantee you would get sound. Whether it's good sound or sound you want to hear, I can't promise that. More experimentation would be needed. The good thing about using a magnetic pickup, because this gold foil, it's actually a, a magnetic electric guitar pickup in there with windings and, all, and the magnet and all of that. So you can get some electric guitar sounds out of it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it into a super top secret prototype distortion fuzz pedal that was built by a friend of mine, Dennis Collin, who has, has passed on as of last year. He, he, uh, he left us. But before he, before he died, he and I were working together on a distortion pedal. Uh, he pretty much single-handedly invented the ARP 2600 synthesizer that the Who used on Bob O'Reilly and, and Teenage Wasteland and various things. Steve Miller used it, Edgar Winter. It helped to change the face of modern rock and roll uh, through uh, electric synthesizer sounds. Anyway, Dennis made this. Uh, it's still a prototype. It hasn't been released, but I'm going to put this diddly bow through it kind of in memory of Dennis today. We do have another question uh, from Chris Dickens. Uh, he'd like to use one of the foil pickups. How difficult would it be to remove the plug and add a standard no volume knob and jack? Not too hard, Chris. Um, it is just, I think there's two, two leads in there. Oh, hear the rumble coming in. Some good stuff about to happen here. Um, I don't think it'd be that hard. Uh, we've cut them off before. You know, you got your leads in there. You would wire it like any other two lead um, pickup that you have. So, not hard. Now, these pickups are kind of, they're kind of funky. Shane Spiel can tell you. He's used them a good bit. They, uh, they're a little bit microphonic. You can almost talk into them and get some sound. 
um, which is kind of weird for a magnetic pickup, but there's all sorts of stuff. They're, they're crunchy, they're funky, they're a little scratchy. Sometimes they make crazy sounds, but they're like 12 bucks on the city Giddy <laughs> site. So you know, what do you want? All right, now we got some stuff going on here. So. I'm not a diddly bow player, so I'm making this up as I go. I've got two screwdrivers. Now, I have no idea what the scale length is of this instrument, where the frets should be or anything. I didn't measure it. If you notice, I've got this ruler here. I didn't use it at all. I haven't measured a thing. So what I'm going to do is just by ear, I'm going to find where the marks should be and make some marks with my Sharpie here to make it a little easier to play. So right there has a good sound to it. I know from what I know about guitars and slide playing that that should be my fifth, where the fifth fret would be. Then up here, that's where the seventh fret would be. Let me turn this a little bit down for a minute here so that rattle isn't... And then right about here is where the third fret would be. There's my blue note. And then... It's a little tricky right over the pickup there. And there's where the twelfth would be. That's the halfway point. And then actually you can go from the other way. Make the dots here because that lets you do a little bit of a little bit of funny stuff while you're playing and you'll see the point of that here in a minute so now I've got my fretboard <laughs> marked out with the position so now I can uh, let's see I need a little bit better screwdriver than this I had a couple out here I think I put them back so here's a little bit a couple of heavier heavier screwdriver Turn this back up a little bit. Commenting. All right, I think. Uh... So, diddly bow playing is as much percussion as it is melody. I was picking out a melody there, but it's also, you know, you get the tap and the drumming. Now, you can you could pick it as well. I uh, think I got a pick around here somewhere. So, you could take a, a glass bottle and a pick. it's more fun to bang on it. Now Dale, is Dale in the vicinity? Dale who's been working here at CB Giddy with us. He left. Um, he's a drummer. He, he brought down a couple of drumsticks which your basic electric diddly bow here, what can we do to make it even crazier? What can we do to add to it? Well, Dale brought down this. I had not seen this before. I'm going to get it in close here. This is a cowbell from Africa. It looks like it was hand forged, hand beaten. So this is a real deal, an African cowbell. And if you bang it, 
I bet that's coming through the mic good there. You get that cowbell sound. So on our diddly bow here, what if, just for fun, just gonna turn the amp down for a minute. I'm gonna pull this nail back out, take out this bottle, and I'm gonna slide in this cowbell as tight as I can get it in here, hopefully without breaking my string, which is always a danger. And now, while holding that tight, I'm gonna ask our cameraman, Nick. Hey guys. <laughs> come over and give that nail a couple of whacks with the hammer. Where is right there? All right. Now, if I hit his <laughs> finger, I'm really uh... This is a family show. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> so now, This has affected my scale length, so my marks are all different. And I'm getting a rattle from the cowbell. All right, what have we got here? to get funky you can dress up your diddly bow with some other stuff it would help if it were nailed on I want to say that in advance you got the uh, Volkswagen hubcap old tin lids uh, you can put bottle caps on there all sorts of funky stuff to kind of add some extra percussion to your diddly bow and if you practice up a little bit you know you can kind of make a and some people have made a one-man band show pretty much just with the diddly bow so, cowbell, diddly bow, one string, an electric pickup, some other random stuff, some drumsticks or screwdrivers or scraps of wood. You can put one together in just a few minutes and be making music and ready to go. Did you find Dale? I went. I looked for him. I can't find him. He told me he was going to, oh yeah, yeah, I'll jump in, I'll help. Because he's a drummer, you know, he actually knows. <laughs> He actually has some rhythm, unlike me, I just kind of duff along. So just a couple pieces of scrap wood you can get sound. like just a few minutes built a playable diddly bow out of a bunch of scrap stuff that didn't um, mostly cost nothing the only thing that was a, a new product is this pickup here uh, the CB Giddy gold foil Tesco style pickup but honestly I've seen people take old uh, transformers like out of old radios or whatnot and wire those in as a pickup so you could build something like this entirely from scratch with really no cost at all and uh, that's all I've got. <laughs> I hope, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any other questions pop up, Nick? Uh, no, not yet. All We're right. Quick. Last call for questions, guys. Last call for question you all. Oh, Christopher Walken was here. Christopher. Yeah. Oh, need fever. Need more cowbell, baby? More cowbell. We're going to go out on cowbell. <laughs> all right. We'll see you later. Cigar Box Nation TV. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs>